get chasing better. No matter where I go. What's up, everybody? Hope you're having a great Wednesday. It doesn't feel like a Wednesday. I was out of town a little bit last week and um, long holiday weekend with President's Day. Um, so yeah, doesn't it does not feel like a Wednesday. I don't know what day it feels like. Um, it just doesn't feel like a Wednesday, but that is okay. It is great to see everybody wherever you happen to be watching, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or Instagram or this is in a story or YouTube or TikTok or podcast. Wherever you're watching, as always, thanks for watching. I know that there is, I'm going to drop a big word on you. It's not really that big, but don't ask me to spell it. Like really big kudos if you can spell the word I'm about to tell you without looking it up plethora. I'm sure there are a plethora of content options for you to be checking out. But the fact that you're tuning in to listen to anything that I got to say really means a lot to me. And I, I hope as always that I can uh, add some value today and bring some encouragement to you, bring some hope to you, and uh, just give you some words to hold on to because this ride that we're on called Life is quite the adventure. It doesn't mean it's always easy. It doesn't mean it's always makes sense. Uh, it it sure is not handed to to many of us. And um, there's there's a lot of things that are challenging. So if you're in one of those situations, I understand, and I'm with you. Solidarity. But uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. Um, you know, I've talked about this the last several weeks. In fact, the last kind of few episodes or lives that I've done have been kind of around this topic and the main reason is because I, I don't think there's many things that I enjoy talking about more simply because I've been at several stages that in my life where I felt like reinvention was um, was possible uh, not looking backwards because I think that a lot of times when people feel like they are stuck or when f people feel like they're lost we, we we want to reset and go back to the way things were. Um, most people are trying to move backwards. Like we, we wish that things were like they were at a different time in our life, a simpler time. You know, that's why people say things like the good old days. We, we want things to move backwards. We look backwards because backwards is predictable, right? We, we want to look backwards to a time and season of our life that we felt different or better than we feel now. And so we feel that we're always trying to chase something that's already happened. We're trying to chase something that already existed, trying to recreate something that is absolutely impossible to recreate uh, because it's already gone and it makes people miserable. It makes people uh, sad. And one of the most difficult places in life to be is feeling like you are on the, the downhill slope, right? That, that your best days are behind you, that your best memories are behind you. And, and it's just not true. And there's a lot of exciting things that are ahead. And, and that doesn't mean that those exciting things are going to be accomplished without challenge. It doesn't mean they're going to be handed to anybody. It doesn't mean there's not going to be some hiccups along the way. And it most definitely will be a, an uphill climb for, for everybody, right? To, to get to where you want to be, to be the person you want to be, it's probably going to be an uphill climb. And it, it's, it's challenging and there's going to be some bumps in the road and there's going to be some times that you stumble. There may even be times that you fall backwards a little bit and you move, move farther away from the destination that you're heading to instead of closer to it. And that can get incredibly, incredibly discouraging. Um, but I, I specifically wanted to talk, and this really goes in line with what I, what I mainly do, right? So I, I do, I like to speak and talk to people and add encouragement and all that stuff. I love speaking on stages. I love talking to groups on Zooms. I love that the most probably. I, I enjoy um, personal coaching and uh, mindset coaching, but I think the, the bread and butter of what I do uh, is health and wellness coaching. It's what I've been doing for eight years and it's something that I feel a strong connection to. Not because I love health and wellness, not because I just am over the top in love with healthy foods. I like donuts. I like pizza. I like tacos, right? That's just like, let's get into the shit. I like all that stuff. I don't like working out. 
Every day that my trainer comes, it's the worst hour of my day. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. I love Mike. I don't enjoy working out. It's not something that I enjoy, but it's something that I do because there's something specific that I'm chasing after when it comes to health and wellness. Um, so there's a reason why. There's a reason why I, I put so much emphasis on health and wellness in terms of a priority in your life. First of all, it's because this this body that all of us have, there's only one, right? And and I know that there are, there are people that are sick and that have ailments and that have things and they would probably tell you that they would trade just about anything in their life if they could have health. And just because you eat right and exercise doesn't guarantee that you're going to be uh, immune from tragedy, that you're going, uh, that you're going to be immune from you know, the, the cycle of life happening to all of us. It just does. Uh, there are things that happen to us physically that are not in our control. There are very much things in our life that happen to us that are in our control. And there's a lot of things in between. So there's a whole lot of life that is not in our control. And I think that's one of the things that I really wanted to, to, to point out about if you find yourself in a season where you seem lost where you seem a little bit confused, where you seem a little bit uh, discouraged, or a lot of those things. And you're just not quite sure what to do. I, I've been in situations in my life recently, like more recently than I care to admit recently, where I felt in life like I was in this deep pit and the harder that I tried to get myself out of it, it felt like the deeper the pit was. And that's a pretty miserable place to be when you feel like the only effort that you're putting in is actually digging a deeper hole for you. It's not digging a way out. It's just deeping it, it's digging a, a deeper hole. And that can be a very, very discouraging thing. And if you let yourself you can get incredibly overwhelmed with all of the things that are happening in our life surrounding us that are not in our control. Like I could be the best driver, the best certified driver on the planet with a Tesla that drives itself and is A-rated for safety and a semi-truck could still blow a red light and plow into me. Like there's a lot of things that I can do that are in my control. And even in those situations, there are a lot of things outside of my control that I have nothing to do with in terms of like what what the stock market did yesterday or who we're going to be at war with next or who the next president's going to be or which party has control of the House and Senate and, you know, what what laws that Supreme Court passes and all the things, right, all the things that are happening that are outside of our control that tend to occupy our thoughts on a consistent basis. And the more we think about those things, it just sends us further and further away from the person that we want to be. And here is, I think, one of the biggest flaws that humans have. And we all have it, whether you're a person of faith or not, you have this, whether you are a person that is healthy or not, you have this. It's just the human condition. And what that is, is we tend to if we're not careful, allow ourselves to allow the things that are not in our control to impact the things that are in our control. There are lots of things in life that are out of our control. What other people do, what other people say, what other people post about you, what other things are happening in and around the world. There are so many things and it would be very, very easy to get lost in our headspace of negativity, focusing so much on all the craziness that is going on in the world that just makes it seem like the things that we do every day don't matter, but they do. There are very, very few things in life that we are in control of. And the reason I talk so much about health and wellness is of all the things. Now, again, I full disclosure here because I don't want my DMs to blow up because of pers people telling me that they didn't choose their current health situation. I understand. I understand people don't choose cancer in most cases, right? <laughs> I understand that many times people don't choose tragedy. I get that. I understand. But hear me on this. We choose the foods we eat. We choose whether or not we move if we have the ability to. We choose what we eat. We choose what we drink. We choose. And for a lot of us, we, we have no other ways to cope. Like I, I am never going to hate on anybody or tell you that you are a horrific person because you choose to find something to cope. And you know why I'm never going to do that? Because I choose things to cope too. We all do. 
whether it's in front of a TV show or with a cigar in your hand or with a drink or whatever, I think we all have things. And for a lot of us, that, that's food. They don't call it comfort food for a reason, or they, they call it comfort food for a reason because it's something that we eat that makes us feel good, at least for a minute. But I think that would be my best advice that I know how to give any person that finds themselves in a season of life where they find themselves stuck or they want to be in a reinvented, um, it would be like in one of the, I love Disney songs, but in Frozen 2, which is probably top three, like, you know, Disney, tri whatever, like movies, like the Frozen movies, I, I love those. But there's a song that, um, I, think it's, I think it's Anna that does it, but she talks about the next right thing. That I'm just going to do the next right thing. That I, I have so many things in my life that I can't control, that I don't have answers to. But I can do the next right thing. And there's going to be some times when I make wrong decisions and embrace those too because that's part of what it means to be a human. But as, as much as that I can in, my, in, in, the, in the ability that I have, that I'm not trying to lose some weight because I'm trying to be on a, a magazine cover, I'm doing it because I want to feel better about myself. I want to look and be proud of what I see in the mirror. I want to do this because it makes me happy, not because I'm trying to do anything because I live for the, the, the comments or approval of anybody else and what they tell me my life should or should not be. I do it because I want to, right? So what is the next right thing for you? What is that? You know, maybe that's having a conversation with a guy like me who is someone that likes helping people when it comes to health and wellness or maybe just another area of your life and just saying, hey, you know what? Maybe the next right thing for me is a conversation to have with somebody. Maybe the next right thing for me is to ask for some help. Maybe the next right thing for me is to focus on losing some weight because I know that losing 15 pounds or 30 pounds is not going to take away all of the world's problems but it's the next right thing for me. It's the thing that I can control. Waking up and working out or going for a walk or getting to the gym or um, you know, passing on seconds or only having one piece of dessert or having one drink instead of 14, whatever it is. What, what is the next right thing for you? It is not my job to tell you what the next right thing is for, for you because to be honest, sometimes I have a hard enough time figuring out what the next right thing is for me. But I usually know. I usually know. And I also give myself complete grace and understanding that I'm not always going to get it right. And maybe it's not always about um, right and wrong and good and bad and black, white or any of those things. Maybe it's just about forward. And I'm going to go forward with what feels like forward today, fully understanding that as I look back over the course of my life, forward was sideways and sideways was backwards. And I'm just trying to figure this thing out and called life. But today, I'm going to do the next right thing. I'm going to have a goal and I'm going to drink this many ounces of water. That's the right thing for me to do today. I'm going to do it. Today, that right thing is moving my body, which I did at 10 o'clock this morning. Today is I'm going to eat six times today because that is the next right thing for me today. And there's a lot of things that I can't sort out today. There's a lot of answers to life's questions that I won't have the answers to today. There's a lot of people that I've hurt. There's people that I have to apologize to. There's amends that I have to make. There's uh, rights that I or wrongs that I have to right. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I could overwhelm myself with today. Things that I've done, things that people have done, opportunities that I've missed, things that if I wanted to could set me into a path of negativity in a moment's notice. It is not difficult to fall down a hill. It's not. It can be difficult to after you have fallen down a hill in life to stand up and to dust yourself off and to do the next right thing and just take the next step. It doesn't matter that you were further ahead in whatever this race, you, listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Am I further ahead than I was 10 minutes ago? Can I take a step forward? Forward is better. It doesn't matter if I was 585 steps on the ladder in my perceived definition of success three years ago. 
and today I'm 214 rungs on the ladder. By, by perception, that would look at it and say that I've fallen backwards, but maybe I was 212 steps on the ladder yesterday, and I've climbed two steps today. Next right thing. What is the next right thing for you? What is that? Define that, do it with consistency over a period of time. That creates habits, habits creates change, change creates difference in your life, and the happiness that you want to create that you feel like is only a dream is really possible by doing the next right thing over and over, over and over, over and over until it just becomes part of who you are and you can't imagine not making that a part of your life anymore. So that was what I wanted to share with you today. Hope it was helpful. Hope you enjoyed that. And um, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing. And uh, we will see you next time. See no more fears, or moved by fears, I dry my tears, cause I